pretty easy spot here. And over here, um, big blind check back, or sorry, button check back. We ended up losing here, which is unfortunate. And over here we get to the river, lots of air. We unblock most of the important stuff. I do expect to get called here like a fair amount. I think he's gonna have like a fair amount of queen 10 that calls a turn, even 10, nine. So it's not like it's the best river for bluffing, but I do unblock hearts, which is important to me. Uh, when I think about how to bluff this river. And um, I also have those types of hands, like those types of value bets. So meaning like, you know, queen X value bets and things I have to bluff with something. And you can make arguments around bluffing with like, a, even being more picky, you can make arguments around that. And I would be, I would think they're fine. It's like a fine approach to be more picky with how you choose your bluffs, but I don't think that's a bad bluff to choose. You can make an argument, a case for like not bluffing with a nine in your hand, for example. But I don't, I don't think it matters like that much. Spike, let's spike here. It's all right, happens. Standard spot to make the call there. We've got six tables up now, so we're definitely bumping with action. I also have like a lot of, uh, there's a lot that goes into running BBZ that I can't neglect that. Um, arguably I was, I mean, not arguably, like that I need, there's shit I need to do that I haven't been doing. And I've been able to tackle some of that recently. I had some friends like, you're skipping the WQ main, man. I was like, yeah, I'm skipping the WQ main, man. Like, fuck. I played a main event last week, and then I played again. And then I played a main event the week before that. And then, like, you know, in July, I played, like, some main events for, like, the summer series and some other shit. And, like, in spring, I played main events. And, like, this is, this has been, like, you know, I've been playing a lot of poker. A lot. A lot of tournaments. And right now, this is just about, like, kind of me focusing on me. And me focusing on me is me not playing tournaments right now. Which feels good, to be honest. Like, just... Feels good when you're just like, yeah, like the what's the what's the one thing you can do for yourself? And it's like, slow the fuck down for a minute. That's where we're at right now. Um, like no need to like lie about anything. Doing me and taking a fucking breather. Like the po poker do poker doesn't have an off season, right? Like cause there, there's no off season. So my off season is just me chilling and playing this format, playing cash. Are you a watch, a watch guy? What's the most expensive watch you have? Um, I'm not like, I mean, I'm not opposed to watches, so I could see myself spending tons, but I haven't spent, I haven't spent tons. Um, the watch I'm wearing right now is I have a tag on right now, and then, which is like 1200 bucks, and then I have a, I'm spacing on the other watch I have right now. I don't know why I'm spacing, but I am. And it's like 4,000, something like that. But I don't have like any like, you know, I don't have any 50K watches or anything yet. I say yet, because I think about it sometimes. So that could change, but. But at the moment, the most expensive watch I have is like 4,000. Got a lot of outs to fade. There we go. Very standard spot to shove the small blind. Also standard spot to call, so it's not like my opponent did anything either. Heads up in both. Bad turn. So took second in that one. Rest. Apologize for trolling last time. No problem. You're forgiven. <laughs> it's all good, man. I think that's super close against a three big blinds. Actually, I think that's a call at three. Um, I, I think it's. He had like slightly over three, and it's like obviously like the like the nut low and second nut low. I think I should probably still fold. 
Uh, oh, sorry, probably still call, rather. I think I probably made a small mistake with the with the 7-3 outfold there, but it doesn't really matter because we get the W anyway. Um, yeah, so, it, yeah, as far as the whole 20 thing, are good. Did you look up the ace-10 spot on 10-8-6 on the 5K? I don't even remember what the ace-10 spot was. So, maybe, maybe not. I don't remember what the ace-10 spot was. Probably. Like, if you think I should have looked it up, I probably did. Like, I, just being on, like speaking on average, I, I usually look them up. Home run. I'm not a bit like I'm not like honestly like there's really not many things that are like like ride or die important except for like my family and my business. So, do you think hypers are worth it to grind or is it just because of rake back? I mean like they're worth it to grind because of rake back, right? Like the, like the rake back's a thing. It's it's like it's real money. It's not like the rake back. I always feel like people th feel like there's some kind of pride thing associated with with like rake back or making money with rake back or not or making money without rake back or something. It doesn't matter. Money's money. It's just. Like the, the dollars that hit, hit the bank account, like they, they spend all the same, right? So yeah, like a rake back is really important for playing hypers. Facts. Playing playing hypers without rake back is like not usually great. But um, just because that's the case doesn't mean that like the money is any, any different. As long as you're getting some kind of rake back deal and most of the sites give you some amount of rake back for playing hypers, for playing poker. All right, so. It's a pretty good spot to get the chips in, even with the re-steal. Obviously, plenty of, plenty of ace queen, even ace jack in this range. Side face. Um, yeah, I mean, like this is probably very close to. Like, I don't know if this can can go in pure from this position. There's a possibility it just mixes out to fold. It's not even like when I say possibility, like it's, it's like reasonably likely that this hand is just a fold. But I don't really recognize this player, so I would assume this limps like maybe a, on average like includes a few, like a couple more hands than normal. It's a hell of a call. I don't really expect that call. Um, but it worked out for that player. Good thing we loaded this cash game. You've still only got this one table of six max hyper, so. Which involves folding a lot, because that's what happens. Um, I've got, I've got, I've got a good straight draw. Um, this isn't like normally like a huge part of how I, how I, how I check grades in this situation. I don't, I don't know if that's. that's I'll tell you what, it'd be a bigger part of how I check grades to turn if I knew the turn was gonna be a fucking seven. Um, We got called by four. I don't know if you, that was too fast for some of you guys and you missed it, but we got called by four. Not a part of how I fold small blind versus three bet here. It's also not a part of how I put money on the flop, so you can expect me to check fold. Hey guys, what's going on? We've got a new piece of content on bbzpoker.com. Lucky Fish, longtime BBZ coach, is someone that I've been pushing to create something with me for a while. He has a thought process that's probably one of the sharpest exploitative thought processes that I've seen, and he does a great job of communicating it, which most people don't do. So if you're really trying to get better and you're trying to look for that type of content, this is it. So head over to bbzpoker.com right now and go check out the new Lucky Fish video. I think with two big blinds, I'm still going to stack off here. I think this range can still include like a wide, wide enough component to, to stack off of these five. Spade would be kind of sweet. Or not. Or not. 6x3 bet in position. I'm going to fold ace 8 suited. I'm going to be calling. I'm going to be calling. Going to be calling again. I think you can make arguments around like that sizing choice should be smaller. If we were if we weren't as deep as we were, I would have I would have sized smaller. Um, but we were as deep as we were, so I sized the way I did. I'll limp here sometimes. choices. Diamond would be cool. Sad face. Mm, 
Spike. Sad face. For streaming. And I don't really like playing multiple formats and streaming at the same time. It's just too difficult. It's actually much easier to stream Zoom and... Um, I don't have to pay attention to lobbies at all. So, so if check check flop, taking a stab here on the turn, which I think is reasonable. Over here, we bet small on the flop, get called, going to overbet the turn, which I think is reasonable against check call. Expect to get a lot of folds, but. Obviously, we're calling. Pretty sweet. Peace, 3300. What up? For MD? Nope. This is wide, but it is what it is. <clears throat> it's a bit of a wide flat pre flop, but. It's not like fucking insane or anything. I think he made a small too. I think he made a 17 on, on my five, so. Otherwise I wouldn't have ended up here. If he made a 20, I would have folded, for example. I just don't really think that this range includes bluffs. All right, I guess it did. Like this is definitely the hand you call with, right? Like it's and let him punt off on to the into the next street. But like I just don't see like him two betting. Oh, like I actually it, it felt like he was, but I didn't think that people actually did that. I was like it kind of feel it felt, kind of felt like yeah, it kind of it kind of felt like he was bluffing, but I didn't think that it was. I like my knowledge of like whether or not people actually two bet that turn with air is. I kind of trumped my spider sense that he was like maybe bluffing and I went with the fact that like I went kind of with the statistics that like people probably aren't too big like low low cardboard textures on the turn light with in three bit pots where they have like very little interaction which I would have called though kind of a punt with the exact hand that I have like it's, it's good to give him rope but I can just Frankie B, I can I can get software to do it. I can get software to res lobbies. You can, I just don't have it. I'm an old man. I do everything manually. I'm stupid. I think you can make arguments around smaller sizing there. I don't think you can make arguments around calling here. Feels like a bad card. What do you guys think? This is going to get caught a bunch. But I think it's pretty standard in this situation. I unblock hearts and spades. I have the bottom of my range. I have value bet still. Like I still have sets and all kinds of other shit. So it feels like this was the one that has to go in. Ahead of like all, almost all of my other buffs. They were getting called. Oh, oh, oh. You guys see my heart rate? We got the heart rate going and everything. For a 1-2 cash game. It's because I was like, fuck me. I hate buffing in this spot. It's like, my guy, this guy's gonna have something like all the time here. I hate buffing in this spot, but like, I gotta do it with this hand, I think. There we go. There we go. Check race here. Won't we'll always check race here. I'll call here a decent amount. This guy's short. So shitty run out. Yeah, so the Ape Styles webinar bundle, 11 hours of content. Um, great for people trying to figure out the game. It's not a course, but it's six, It's 11 hours, nine hours of him, but we curated 60 hours of the work he did last year to find the best nine hours. And we're pretty proud of the product, so. Head over to bbcpoker.com, check it out. Make sure you guys are following me on Instagram. Make sure you're following me on Twitch. I am going to be back. There will eventually be more MTT streams for those that are like wondering, will I ever stream MTTs again? Ever. Yes, fuck, of course. But 
taking a fucking break. It's been a long time. Uh, it's been a year of me streaming. I've got other business things that I need to like make sure that I'm staying on top of. And I'm falling behind on some of those. And I also am falling behind on training, going to the gym, and taking care of myself. So taking a little bit of a breather from tournaments and I can control the length of the grind very well with hypers and cash. And so you're going to be able to expect to see me playing more of both of these two formats. I thought about not jamming, obviously. Like I thought about different sizing choices. I ended up setting on setting on jam. Um, I think it's close though. This player opens the button. Sorry, I open the button. This player three bets the small blind. I call the flop against three bet. And the turn, and I'm gonna lose against flushes here, like kind of a lot actually. But I'm still gonna be calling the river. He can sub ace queen or something. It's unfortunate. He has ace king. Happens. By the look on his face, he's down a lot for today. Uh, no, I'm not down a lot. <laughs> I'm not down a lot. I mean, I mean, I didn't win in hypers for sure, but I won in cash, and I didn't play tournaments today. So, um, no, things are good. I'm just focused, I guess. Anyways, thanks guys. I appreciate it, and I will see you later. Bye bye.